Computer animation, motion graphics, and visual effects are often creations that speak for themselves. There isn't often the opportunity to see the people behind such labor and capital intensive projects. Cartoons play a memorable role in not only the childhoods, uh, but lifetimes of people around the world. Here in Nigeria, Arise correspondent Adifemi Akisaya has a story of a woman breaking barriers in an area of technology dominated by men. From a small office in Lagos, Smith Animation has big plans. A woman-owned business offering a niche alternative to entertainment. The hub is home to the entire creative process of taking an idea from your mind to the big screen. Damilola Sholisi is the chief executive of Smith's, an animation studio she founded in 2010. Animation has been a passion of mine since when I was really young. I started out as a gamer playing in all kinds of video games and I found my first, I think I watched my first Pixar movie around when I was in SS2. Prior to that, I'd seen other 2D animated movies by Disney and the likes. And it just clicked to me that people actually did this for a living. And I really wanted to, you know, find out everything I needed to find out about animation and how to get in. That journey, you know, led me into finding out how to learn on my own and research. I did a lot of cyber cafes, downloading tutorials, and just trying to get myself abreast with the skills. As soon as I finished my NYC, I just knew that this was what I wanted to do. If I wasn't doing animation, I couldn't be doing anything else. Animation has largely been uncharted territory in Nigeria, which posed a challenge for Damilola in her education and early career. Women have traditionally been underrepresented in technology worldwide. Those figures shrink more in terms of women of colour. While gender comes with its own set of barriers in the industry, Damilola says she's focused on rising above them. Is I never really see myself as a lady in technology. I, I know that, you know, I never really see myself as that. I just, I have a tax to do, I have a, a job to do, I have a project to do. I just go at it and just get it done. Yes, I'm, once in a while there are challenges that you know that you're only having these challenges because of your gender. But again, it's about you looking at it and saying, what are your goals, what are your visions, what do you want to achieve? And seeing how you can navigate through all those challenges. Over the years, um, we've always been very few women in technology, but I know that right now there's a... There's a call now to get more women, more girls into technology. A TechPoint report released in 2020 shows just 10% of Africa-focused startups with at least one female co-founder successfully raised $1 million or more in the last decade. The African Development Bank says the entire funding gender gap sits at about $42 billion. Over the years, Damilola has had to rely on grants to keep the business afloat. And she's hopeful the industry will see more investment in the very near future. It's really time for us to start to share Nigerian stories and now start to do big content. So we're talking feature films, TV series and the like. So it's, it's now about how we can creatively get the funding and investments behind those kinds of projects to be able to execute them. Although over the years we've been creative, we've been able to access quite a number of grants from both the Nigerian government and the US government and that has been able to propel the business forward. In addition to a group of freelancers, Smith's Animation currently has five full-time employees. One of them is art director Michael Okoraga, who says creating characters from scratch is his favourite part of the job. I mean, the hardest part is the research. Once you get the research of what you want, the style you want to focus on, then it will be easier for you to do. So you just, get to, you just have to do a rough sketches for approval. Smith's Animation's first television series, Maker Bolts, was a finalist at the 2021 Anensi, the largest animation film festival in the world. But that's not all. We've crossed the hurdle of people understanding what animation is commercially and seeing what the possibility is, so that's great. The industry is now growing. Now we're now moving into the next level because, you know, we have all the stories that we need to tell, um, our African stories, our folk tales and the likes that can be animated and be shared globally to the world. And it's exciting to see how that journey progresses over the next few years. And that's what many people are looking forward to, the opportunity to continue the legacy of creating cartoons and animations that will stand the test of time. Adifemi Akinsanya, Arise News, Lagos. All right, Adifemi Akinsanya is here with us, Arise correspondent. Uh, Adifemi, you're welcome. Thanks for joining us. Yeah. I want to talk about the inspiration for, for Damilola. Most of us grew up enjoying cartoons, mm -hmm. but that's usually where it ends. What was the extra push for her? I think it's because she knew she could do it and she wanted to channel that energy, that, you know, interest into education and opportunities thereafter. So you heard her say in the very beginning of that package that she really struggled to find an educational course, a higher learning course, a degree 
uh, in animation, and she, she struggled in vain. Sadly, she wasn't able to find one, but that didn't really damper her spirit or damper her dedication to wanting to continue to find herself in this industry. And it's, it's another example of how you make a way out of no way. And we can only hope that, you know, for the generations of girls or people coming behind her, there'll be more options. Because as it stands now in Nigerian universities, for example, and, I, and I'm comfortable to say around the world, you, you can't imagine that there are so many options for animations in higher education. So that's one thing that she definitely struggled with in the very early part of her educational career, being able to tally her, her interests with this line of work. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I, I can imagine that her story is it's one that many people who have had to carve a niche out of the mainstream would, would have had to go through. Fantastic. Did you get a sense of how long it takes to create some, one of these, some of these productions? A whole lot of time. Yeah, a whole lot of time. I can imagine. <laughs> I can imagine. Because, like, you know, we were talking behind uh, during the break, and you mentioned that for a feature film, for yeah. example, you know, they could take upwards of a year. Right. So I can imagine, as she says, it is time-intensive, labor-intensive, and capital-intensive. Uh -huh. So, you know, and, like, the capital aspect of it, it's more than just, of course, being able to pay yourself and pay your employees and pay, pay your freelancers. It's also investing in the uh, infrastructure, the hardware that you need, the software that you need to make sure that you can execute these ideas. And as you said, it is very time, I mean, as you asked, rather, it is very time-consuming. If you wanted to have an animation, for example, one episode, I can imagine that taking at least... A week, at least. Wow. At least. Gosh. And that's just one episode, probably a few minutes long, because um, as you know, you heard the art director say, you know, it takes a, it's a, you know, it's a nice process to actually start creating these characters and sets and movement. And then if you want to voice, you obviously need to bring in voice actors. They need to lay their voice and match it with the characters. And then the final editing and post-production. I can imagine so it takes a, 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 good, a, a good bit of time. You, you mentioned the art director and you mentioned her team. She's mm -hmm. breaking barriers as a woman doing yes. this. But what about her team? Is there a good mix of, you know, female workers on her team, men as well? Yes, there were. Yeah. So there's Dami Lola herself, who is the CEO and also an animator. And then you've got Michael, who is the art director. But then also in shot, you're able to see other women who are also alike. So even though they are a small team as it pertains, and though their employee numbers are relatively small, they do rely on freelancers who are a mix of gender. But for what we saw there, it, there is a very strong woman presence there. So that's very good for technology as well. So speaking of which, I mean, I guess based on your, your investi investigations for this piece, mm -hmm. are, you, are you satisfied with what you're seeing as far as uh, Was women it really an investigation? Okay, a report, for your reporting, for yes. your reporting. Are, are you satisfied with the amount of women-led tech outfits like what Demi Lola is doing in the country? Well, first and foremost, she is a unicorn in the sense that when we're looking at animation and cartoons and women at the forefront, she is the only one that I've seen that I've come across. Right. And I found her on the internet. So. For, for the very fact that she is the first, it's a good thing, first and foremost, for women, for Nigerians. We've been talking so much. This day has covered, done an extensive piece on technology giants. They've even calling technology the new oil in Nigeria in mm. terms of the, the prospects it has to make real money. So it's a positive time for them. And for Demi Lola, who's had to carve herself out of no way, like I said, and is a woman, it's a fantastic thing for technology and for women in Nigeria. Uh, 30 seconds, mm. uh, STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math. Uh, are we in the right direction with in including girls in there? Yes, absolutely in the right direction, but we have to like, you know, put real action behind that, you know, in, behind that potential. So more uh, academics, more courses being able to tailor to it, more workshops and more, more investment. And, you know, you know for, for, what, for what it looks like, Lagos State seems to invest itself a lot into the creative industry. So it would be good to see how they can invest in this and see how that betters many people. Great reporting. Adifemi Akisa, a Rice correspondent. Thank I you so can't. much for joining us.